I know you're kind of a big deal, but do you mind if I cover you in blue paint? Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, the finest phototainment in the world. We are an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Dustin, this week we're super excited because we have a special guest on. Uh, Aaron Nace is with us. He is the founder of the company Flurn, but more so than that, he's also just like a tremendous portrait photographer his work is absolutely amazing he does like these really cool fantastic surreal portraits of people and portraits of himself too when he first got started (laughs) aaron uh we're so glad to have you here um how are you today i'm fantastic yeah doing super well i had uh Oh man, I just got back from Alaska. I was uh, had the fortunate opportunity to go visit some friends of mine who got married, and I actually did photograph their reception. Uh, oh. this, uh, so, you know, I am not a wedding photographer by profession, but, you know, within the last week, I had a, a teeny tiny little bit of experience there. And uh, I also got a chance to hike around Denali National Park, uh, which contains Denali Mountain, the tallest mountain in North America at 20,000 feet. And man, I was just blown away by the sheer immensity of uh, of that space. And uh, I've been posting pictures on my Instagram. So if you guys want to see what a crazy land Alaska is. Uh, check me out on Instagram. I'm AK and is in Nancy, A-C-E-R. Um, so, yeah, doing doing fantastic and glad to be here on the show. Well, we're, we're certainly glad to have you. Um, before we jump into a bit more about you and what you've got going on, what are you drinking tonight, Aaron? I am drinking. This is a uh, Mein Klang. Uh, is this a will people be able to see the video should i hold it up to the camera nope no video nope. is purely for steven and i's this, enjoyment the room behind me would be a lot cleaner if this is going to be video. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm drinking a uh mein klang bergen Landrud 2017 uh which is uh it's a, a basically it's an austrian hungarian uh uh biodynamic wine it, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful wine. That's uh, the whole biodynamic process. Basically, the uh, there's there's cattle on the land where they grow the grapes, and they use the manure from the cattle to fertilize the grapes. It's a it's a completely closed loop, and everything is organic and to the highest standard. So, um, if anyone so, has, so they're poop grapes. They're poop grapes. They're the best in the world. And if anyone out there has wine, like hangovers or any difficulties with wine, I highly recommend checking out a biodynamic wine because uh, most people who have issues with traditional wines are able to drink biodynamic wines. And they're also just of incredible quality. And I think they're beautiful. Do you fit into that category of people who had trouble with other wines? Is that why you're on the uh, biodyna- biodynamic wine now? Um. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had my share of wine hangovers, I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I do okay, but yeah, since since switching to, you know, uh, a little bit more of a, you know, closed-loop system, um, I, I've definitely done done much better. Uh, the same company does a, a foaming white, which is like a, it's like a champagne style. It's a naturally foaming, um, unfiltered wine. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh yeah. I'm uh, I, just starting to get into the world of wine, but I um, found a few that I really, really enjoy and um, trying to drink at least a glass a day. Wow. Ooh, nice. Keep the, Impressive. Keep the doctor away. <laughs> yeah. There you go. How about you, Steve? What, what, what's going down the slippery slopes of you tonight? Tonight I have a Scarlet Lane Espresso uh, Dorian Stout. The Dorian Espresso mm. Stout, I think, is the technically what it's called. I've had and this on the uh, podcast before. It's very nice. Dustin, what are you drinking? But, well, I just first I wanted to say I've been seeing these Halloween photos you've been posting ab- that you guys took for Scarlet Lane. Very, uh, very cool. Yeah, paid in but, beer. You know how it is. Paid in beer. <laughs> uh, I am drinking a new brewery that I stumbled across called Elysian. Uh, and this is a salute the sun 
beer. I've never had we Salute had... the Sun. Elysian's very good, though. Yeah, it's what somebody told me uh, on uh, our Facebook group that I should try. And so I am trying it. I don't remember who recommended it to me, but thank you. Uh, this is uh, brewed with black limes. But it's uh, it's really good. So, Aaron, if we can, to get back to you and away from me and Dustin talking, um, you said you were just in Alaska and you shot the reception of a wedding. Were you just doing like documentary style type uh, photos for the reception or what were you doing? Yeah, 100 percent. Just documentary stuff. And th these are friends of mine. So I was uh, they I just showed up with my camera. I mean, obviously, I you know, bring my camera when I go to a place like Alaska. Um, and I just happened to have a, a couple bodies on me. So I was just shooting the reception more as just like a, you know, uh, a favor, I guess you could say, or just like I, w I was happy to do it. I, I really wanted to do it. And, um, you know, it was was not a not a, you know, paid position i was just a, a volunteer photographer so have awesome. they been bugging you already and like hey aaron um so when do you think we can get those reception photos oh i gave them all to them the same night whoa nice. like just gave them like the memory card or like what no so i shoot with a sony uh i've got the i've got a7r4s and and three uh the a7r3 as well uh which has uh Wi-Fi in it. The A7R4 has a uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi, which you can connect to your iPad or your iPhone and transfer uh, over Wi-Fi. So at the end of the reception, I just transferred all the images directly to my iPad and then created a, uh, you know, an iPhoto shared album and just sent them a link right there. So before I was even home, they had all the photos. Jeez. Not even a wedding photographer and already putting us to shame. <laughs> well, I didn't edit the images, you know, they got, they got straight out of camera, but I'll, I, I did choose the selects, you know, the images that, you know, made it, uh, you know, made it past the, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to just send them the, you know, focus misses or mi exposure misses or anything like that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Super cool. Technology has come a long way, you know, since I started photography and, uh, it, it's all awesome. Instant, you know, I'm I'm shooting quite a bit with my, uh, you know, with my Wi-Fi enabled cameras, popping them directly onto my phone, and that's for the most part what I post on Instagram. So um, I do studio photography as well, and you know, wireless tethered capture is a reality in the studio now, which is mind blowing. Uh, something that I've never been able to experience before. So for somebody like myself who's never experimented with Wi-Fi tethering of any kind with a camera. Um, are you shooting like a lower raw file or is this like a JPEG preview? Or no, like man. <laughs> no, raw this is to the iPad. Yeah, this is okay. So not to the iPad. So, uh, if you're shooting tethered to a computer, uh, particularly with the Sony and I, I'm shooting with the a seven R fours now, uh, that uses Sony's remote capture program. So, dude, the crazy you get live view preview on your computer over Wi-Fi. Wow. Live That's view. crazy. It's nuts. Uh, take an image. It And uh, yeah, it, with the Sony a7R4, you're talking about 60 megapixel uh, raw photo with 15 stops of dynamic range. And it transfers the raw directly onto your computer. And I have Lightroom auto detect a folder and import it immediately where I do my color correction white balance. So, I mean, I can I can get a shoot up and running in a matter of minutes and, you know, do some quick edits and, and export it out real quick. Uh, when it comes to the iPad and the iPhone, uh, it does send over a JPEG, uh, not a raw image. You, there is a way to get raw images onto the iPad, uh, but as of right now, you have to take the memory card out of the camera and put it into a card reader and plug that into your iPad. So if you want to do that over Wi-Fi for the iPad, it's JPEG. Wi-Fi for any computer is going to be raw. Mm. Interesting. Oh, sorry. I digressed. I just got a little nerdy techie. No, man, I'm I'm totally into it, man. Tech has come a long way. And I feel like these last few years have given us some real, uh, you know, some real bumps in technology. And I, I think it's very exciting. To listeners who want to maybe take a deeper dive into the mobile editing stuff. You just did a episode with Raymond Hatfield of the Beginner Photography Podcast a few weeks ago. That was basically all about mobile editing. It's really good. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely check it out. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I, <laughs> I really enjoy, you know, uh, podcasts are such a fun way to, you know, meet new people and, um, you know, just like build on, you know, like I, I get to hang out with you guys for, yeah. for an hour or so and, and chat. So yeah, love doing them. So I just wanted to say, uh, upon a little deep dive into the world of Aaron, um, you know, I discovered that you and I both kind of started in the same place, and that was uh, Flickr. Yeah. Uh, we were both, you know, Flickrites, as I like to call it. I thought you were going to um, say Aaron was a wedding DJ, and I was like, I didn't pick any of that up in my research. <laughs> uh, you had to do a deep, deep dive to find Aaron's wedding DJ days. Um, no, but I saw that you were into Flickr, and then, like most people, you jump ship and went to, uh, what is it, like 500px? Yeah, I was on 500 PX for a while. And then, you know, really, I mean, my social media career took me from, you know, I, I guess in the early days, you could kind of see Flickr as a social media. I mean, I definitely connected with a ton of people on there. So it's kind of early day social media for photographers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I transitioned from Flickr primarily to YouTube uh, with the uh, with the start of Flurn, which is my education company. So, uh, because I was producing video tutorials, uh, YouTube was just a, a much more um, uh, well suited platform for the type of content that I was creating. Mm -hmm. So, what caused you to want to go from posting photos to Flickr to like, wow, I really want to make educational content? Well, yeah, actually, it was just uh, I, people started asking me how I was doing my how I was taking my images. You know, it was really just something that I was put, putting quite a bit of work into uh, my photos and doing a lot of Photoshop. And the comments started rolling in, you know, hey, Aaron, can you just teach me how to do this? Can you show me how to do what you're doing? And once I realized that enough people were asking, I, I started doing like one-on-one uh, -on -one classes, like on Skype, like we're doing right now. And uh, that kind of led into pre-recorded videos. So it was just a natural transition. You know, I was, I was just hungry and looking for anything that, that could possibly work. And uh, that came across my plate and I, I've run with it. Fantastic. Would you say your work is kind of inspired by Gregory Crutzen? Uh, I mean, in the early days, a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he was, yeah, for sure. He was at the time when I was like really learning photography, I, he was one of the larger names in, in, in photography. And, uh, yeah, I mean, his lighting is, uh, absolutely beautiful and he's most definitely a conceptual photographer. Uh, yeah. not as soon much as I saw your work, he was the first person I, th I thought of. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely an influence there. Uh, David LaChapelle, uh, also an influence and, uh, you know, a uh, 10 million billion other artists from every other genre you could think of as well, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. Especially in those early learning state stages, um, you know, getting, uh, getting an understand of, uh, understanding of light. Uh, I was able to look at some masters like Crutzen and uh, try to analyze what they were doing. Nice. So just going through and like doing a little research on you, it says that you kind of got your start into photography because you started out like in industrial design and that sort of stuff um, mm -hmm. way back in 2007 while you were on a trip through South America, just with yeah. like a point and shoot camera. Um, yeah. What sort of stuff were you shooting on that trip? That was, I mean, just like travel document stuff. You know, I was, I was uh, on the trip with my girlfriend. So, you know, pictures of me and her together. And then also we just were going around and, like doing fun stuff in incredible locations. Um, we hiked uh, Cotopaxi, which is a, a volcano in Ecuador. It's, um, I think it's like 16,000 feet, might even be higher than that. Uh, but, you know, yeah, at the top of this amazing uh, mountain where you have, uh, you know, like llamas. Um, llamas mm -hmm. are in like the um, uh, cameloid family uh, along with uh, camels and other animals like alpacas and vicuñas and wanacos. Um, so at the top of this mountain, uh, Cotopaxi, there was like a pack of wild, uh, vicuñas, which was like, are you kidding me? I just like stumbled upon a pack of wild vicuñas, uh, in like the early morning mist and haze. So like looking over the mountain, you know, 
right next to me, there was like the, this pack of, they look like small llamas. Um, and uh, there's just like a beautiful uh, cloud rolling in behind them with like a, a golden light shining behind it. Uh, you know, and that just happened to be there. And I had my little point and shoot camera and that's one of the pictures that I took. So I got back and was like, man, I got some really, really cool photos and super enjoyed this. I want to take a look at, you know, taking a deeper dive into photography at the time, not as a profession, not something I was going to try to make money at, just something that you know, gave me an outlet for my creativity and uh, something that allowed me to kind of get out and, and, and see and do uh, really inspiring things. Mm -hmm. Do you still see photography as a way to get out and see and do inspiring things? I feel like a lot of your images now are very surreal. And are you more trying to create like the, the things you want to see out in the world now? Yeah, it's a bit of both, you know, like, like I said, last week I was in Alaska and I found myself in the Denali National Park. I, I pulled my car to the side of the road and uh, did a little bit of a hike. Uh, I, I got to the park before sunrise and uh, for a decent bit of time, I was basically the only one in the park and went on a hike and just surrounded by incredible nature on, on all sides. And uh, I had my 7200 with me and I, I, I did a, a few like... Uh, panoramas while I was there. Um, so that was just, yeah, like being in an incredible place and, and, and taking pictures while I was there. But my conceptual work, yeah, I'm, I'm also just trying to create, you know, things that I would like to see in the world, uh, whether it's based on, you know, uh, an idea of I had, a, an emotion that I'm going through, you know, something I'm trying to process. Um, you know, conceptual photography for me is a way to um, kind of express my creativity in a in a number of different ways because you know taking a picture is a small uh piece of the puzzle when creating a conceptual photograph oftentimes it involves uh building sets or finding unique locations uh hiring talent with hairstylist, artists, prop stylist, wardrobe, you know, like there's a lot of things that can go into building a conceptual photograph. And each one of those is like a creative piece of the puzzle. Uh, so I, I really enjoy doing that as well. And uh, for me, it, it allows me to do something that, you know, I would have never done in my life. You know, you look through uh, conceptual photos and it's like, wow, this, this was a really cool experience. You know, you got all these people together to, you know, to, to create a piece of art and uh, it, it still inspires me to this day. Mm -hmm. I love it. So do you find yourself, so obviously you run Flurn mm -hmm. and you do that, like that's like your nine to five, so to speak. Um, but then are you also still like, do you take on photography clients? Or are you taking photos specifically for the educational platform? And so that you can retouch them and like show different things about what you're doing from an educational standpoint, or are you also like this, you know, side hustle freelance photographer on the side. I'm just trying to understand all of the facets that are you. Yeah, all of the above, man. You know, I'm just like I, I love. I'm fortunate enough to like really love what I do, and so I <laughs> I live and breathe it. You know, I mean, I, I definitely like have a you know, have a personal life and take breaks. But, uh, yes, all, all of the above. I, uh, you know, full-time working with Flurn, I get to do all kinds of fantastic shoots, uh, you know, through my education company. Uh, I take commercial clients both, uh, as photographer, as a photographer and as a retoucher as well. And, um, I've got a few other, um, things that I do on the side as well. So yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> always, you know, always looking for an interesting project that, you know, fits, fits my style and, and something that I want to do with my life. And, uh, you know, when those things align, I'm, I'm, yeah, super excited to, uh, you know, to kind of stretch any type of creative, uh, muscle that I have. Do you find that you're more of a photographer that likes to retouch or a retoucher that likes to take photos? I, I would say that I'm more of a photographer. Um, and the work that I do, I mean, so retouching in itself is like a small portion of what I do in Photoshop. So when, I guess when people think of retouching, they're like, make the skin look nice and things like that. Um, what I think is personally really exciting in Photoshop is doing like compositing and right. creating like surreal images, you know, like images that literally could not exist in real life, like making a person look like they're 20 feet tall, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, combining hundreds or even thousands of different individuals to like create uh, a new world. Uh, you know, these things can be seen on my portfolio page. That's um, AaronNace.com. A A R O N N is in Nancy. A C E dot com. Uh, you know, that to me is the super fun stuff to do in Photoshop. So I would say that you know. Uh, Number one, I guess I'm a, a visual artist, and photography is one of the ways that I go about creating art, and Photoshop is another tool in the toolbox to create the final image. So, um, you know, these it, these are all parts of parts of a whole, and the creative process usually begins with a sketch on a piece of paper, and then it goes into pre-production, and then, you know, the photo shoot happens, and then the post-production as well. So it's, uh, it, it's you know, for my conceptual work, uh, it's, you know, each one of those images is, uh, is a production in itself. And, uh, you know, that's, that the entire production for me is what makes it so exciting. But I think what's different about you, uh, and I could be completely wrong because, I'm just making this up, um, is that I feel like most photographers at your level outsource or they have an editor or someone that's doing the compositing and that heavy lifting for them. I mean, they might, you know, conceptualize the idea, but then someone else is, you know, they hand it off. They might oversee it. They might sit over their shoulder, whereas you both possess the skills to capture it and composite it, which I think are two very different skill sets that you've both mastered and can do, you know, yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I think that a large part of that just came from, uh, the 365 day project that I did, which was, a, I took a self portrait every day for a year and posted it on flickr.com. And, you know, in those days I, I was doing photography just for fun. This was not a career and I, I really didn't have any budget, you know, uh, there was, I, I had no other option. I wanted to create images that I thought were, were interesting visually. And, you know, there was no money. It was me and a camera, uh, and an idea and, you know, learning to do the Photoshop side of things and learning to do the photography side of things was, um, you know, was, was an exciting journey for me. And, you know, if definitely, you know, come a long way since those early days. Uh, but I still really enjoy every piece of that, uh, every piece of that process. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I kind of lucked out in, in the fact that, you know, being a bit of a tech, uh, you know, I, I'm very just like into tech in general, uh, but I'm also into the art side of things. So, you know, things like Photoshop, uh, you know, came, I, I was just very interested in it. So I, I spent a lot of time in it and um, I became, you know, I guess fluent in the language of Photoshop, you could say. Nice. I guess what I'm mostly wondering then is how do you find time to do all this stuff? Is it, <laughs> is it drugs or is it time travel? No, no, not drugs. You, you can say no to drugs, but I see right behind you, there is some sort of coffee making French press thing. So I know oh. there's caffeine in your system. Um, you know, today I have a little bit of caffeine in my system, but I don't drink coffee. Um, I, I make my own, um, herbal, uh, teas like herbal mixtures. Oh, awesome! Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, for instance, today uh, uh, I put like chaga mushroom powder, which is mm -hmm. like um, um, you know they they put it in all these like newfangled drinks. Um, I used uh, raw. Or, I don't know if they're roasted actually, but guarana berries. You know, mm -hmm. like um, yeah. energy drinks contain guarana. Um, it's just a, a berry, but it happens to have some caffeine in it. But the way that my body processes the caffeine in, from guarana is just very different from coffee. Uh, I don't experience like a, a, a jitter or a crazy high. And um, I also just use one guarana bean in my in my herbal mixture. So, mm. um, you know, we're talking about maybe three to five milligrams of caffeine. But um you know, as far as the time goes, uh, I, I've worked with a really fantastic team who helps manage my time. So, um, you know, pretty much every hour of my day uh, here here at work is scheduled out. Uh, you know, it's uh, not just me doing all this stuff. Uh, having a, a, a very, you know, wonderful support team helps me to get a lot more done in a short period of time. Um, you know, for instance, 
I'm recording a, a pro tutorial right now, which is what we offer through subscription on flurn.com. And uh, we're doing, you know, uh, like soft portrait lighting and retouching. This is the pro tutorial I'm I'm recording currently. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I photographed a friend of mine who's, uh, you know, eight and a half months pregnant. Uh, she actually just had her baby. Congrats. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, so I photographed her here in the studio, uh, you know, with like, you know, soft portrait lighting and uh, and we're building a retouching tutorial out of that. So, um, you know, earlier in the day, I recorded uh, part of this tutorial. Uh, tomorrow I'll be recording a, another part and, and Friday I'm going to finish that up. So, um, you know, I've, I've definitely, you know, from the minute I wake up, uh, uh you know, relatively early in the morning uh, to when I go to sleep, I've, I've pretty much got something on my schedule and, and something to do. So um, it's, you know, <laughs> it's thankfully it's pretty well planned out. So it, it doesn't feel very frantic. But um, yeah, I like I like to keep busy. I, I really enjoy um, joy working on projects and, uh, and, and, you know, hanging out and working with great people as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm just kind of got to got a got a schedule to keep you know <laughs> i love Absolutely. it i mean i was kind of assuming it'd be like meth and lsd or something like that but you know <laughs> it's just this you, is good Steve. too it's only you yeah, yeah <laughs> well yeah. you know you look at the conceptual work and you just think to yourself you have to take drugs to get to that place right but you're saying no He's doing uh, drugs. They're just herbal all natural supplement based yeah. <laughs> over the uh, counter uh yeah, you know, I, I mean, to be honest, none of my work is drug inspired. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, you don't just, have to uh, explain that. We're just joking around. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, but I, I think that's a thing. And I think a lot of artists think, you know, a lot of artists who are curious about drugs think that drugs might help their art. Um, and I'm I'm actually not totally familiar with, uh, you know, in general, but I, I I don't use drugs. I mean, I don't use drugs at all these days. Uh, drugs have never been a part of uh, uh, of of creating images for me. In mm. fact, you know, areas of my life when I have, you know, turned to drugs, and I'm just talking about like smoking pot and stuff. But at times in my life when I have done that sort of stuff, it it, it actually very much impeded my creative process because, mm. especially with pot, it just kind of made me not want to do anything. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, that, that's kind of the antithesis to, to creativity. So, um, yeah, you know, the, my creative work just comes from like wanting to do something different, like wanting to stand out, wanting my images to stand out and me wanting to see something that I've never seen before. And, you know, I, I think with like that goal in mind, like immediately the idea of like, copying someone else's work just like goes out the window right mm -hmm. because yeah. like if you want to make an image that you've never seen anything like that before well you have to start from a place like you have to push a little bit you have to take some chances you have to like you know you have to be willing to do stuff that people aren't doing not to say that it's hard or you know uh, unable for you know everyone could do this uh type of work i really believe that uh but i, I feel like the desire to create something no one has ever seen before is a, a large part of the driving factor behind why I do what I do. So where do you, uh, where do you draw that inspiration from for a lot of your images, like your conceptual work and stuff like that? Is it just like stuff that randomly comes to you or are you like actively going out and like researching like other areas besides photography of like art and stuff to try to draw inspiration? Yeah, definitely. It, but, you 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 nailed it. You know, I love going to like places like the Art Institute in mm -hmm. Chicago and looking at painting and sculpture and, uh, you know, listening to music. I mean, uh, just songs have influenced many of my images, uh, you know, emotions that I'm, I'm trying to like process through or, um, you know, dreams that I've had. And sometimes these just come to me in a little flash of like, oh, that'd be cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's see if we can make it. Um, and sometimes these there are ideas that I kind of sit on for months and months at a time and, um, you know, see if they kind of make it through the list. So, uh, you know, also depending on scope, you know, there, there are some of my images that really just didn't take more than an afternoon to make. And then other images of mine took, uh, like months of planning and preparation to make as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
there, there really is a quite a large gamut in in the work. And you know, if you're looking at creating an image in an afternoon, then you can have that idea in the morning and be done with it by night and post it. You know, and that is what something I learned in my 365 day project. You know, there's a great feeling of accomplishment to like have an idea and see it all the way through to completion and publish it that same day. You know, that's a uh, it's just a fantastic way to to keep yourself motivated and keep yourself going on to the next idea. Do you ever think about like halfway through that 365 day project, just give it up? Oh, man. Uh, well, I mean, there were definitely days where I was just like totally exhausted. I just like took a picture of my foot and was like, sorry, guys, that's all I got. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm very tired. Like, uh, my know, foot is so like creatively interesting now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, like, obviously, like, it, we can't all have up days, right? Like, yeah. like, I get tired, like, you know, I get sick, like that sort of thing happens uh, in life in general. But like, my main goal with my life is like, you know, I'm also on camera like a ton, right? Like mm -hmm. almost every day of my life, I'm on camera. So a big part of my life is just like making sure that like, I'm mentally and physically and spiritually uh, healthy so I can perform day in and day out. It's, it's a huge, huge part of what I focus on. Um, you know, that's, you know, like this, the brew you see behind me with chaga mushrooms and 10 other, um, adaptogenic herbs that I took today. Uh, you know, it's all just like keeping this machine running, you know, mm -hmm. like let's, let's get this thing cranking. Cause you are the moneymaker. Is the uh, the brew with the chaga mushrooms and everything? Is that something you created on your own, or is that like a recipe you found online? Like, are you you like into like the whole body hacking, mind hacking sort of stuff? Or uh, I did create this on my own, and it's different every day. So I have um, I I work with a company. I say work with. I mean, I buy really great products from a company called Rose Mountain Herbs. Like mm -hmm. Rose, like a kiss from a rose, you know, uh, rose mountain herbs. They just offer super, super high quality, um, mostly organic, uh, bulk herbs. And they do like aromatherapy and essential oils and all kinds of things. Um, if anyone's looking to just find like, Hey, where can I find the highest quality, this or that herb? Um, they do spices and, and, and salts and things like that. Rose mountain herbs is the way to go. So, um, they've got a, a very large catalog and, um, I have many, many of their uh, their their products, their plant based products, and I I use uh, intuition, for lack of a better word, uh, to decide what types of products I'm going to mix together on any given day to make different types of brews. So um, this is I my body does not really enjoy drinking or consuming the same thing day in and day out. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. Like vitamin C, like you might need it one day, but like if you take a bunch of vitamin C, you know, like the next day you might not need as much vitamin C, you know. Um, and I find the same thing is, con you know, true with all the food that I consume. So um, I, I try to have uh, a, a, a varied diet in everything that I consume. And um, I also uh, not exclusively, but pretty much try to cook all of my own food mm -hmm. um, or consume all of my own food raw. So, um, yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm just like super into, into food. And, um, if you guys check out my Instagram channel, you'll know that I, I photograph, uh, my meals just about every day and, and post them, you know, on my Instagram, that's a K N is in Nancy, a C E R. Like you can see my most recent post is from what I made for lunch today, which was, um, you know, pan seared, uh, chicken breast, uh, with, uh, zucchini and, uh, uh, purple carrots. Uh, and I'm just looking at this photo now and I'm like, damn, I'm so lucky I got to eat, eat that for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Have you ever thought yeah. maybe instead of saying A K N as in Nancy, you could just say A K N as in knight or knife. Oh, I'm I, just saying you could, you could, you could make it a little bit faster there. Speed it up. <laughs> a K is A K N as in knife. Yeah, no, I, I dig that. I'm, yes, as in knight to knigget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. Should we, uh, should we do some questions, gentlemen? Yeah. Yes, no, I'm please. down for it, man. Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve. Perfect. Dustin, you got a, you got a question? Yeah, you got I a got hot a, one I you want to ask first? Yep. Yep. Good old Elizabeth. 
asks the following: How do I talk to models for photos? I open my mouth, but no words come out. I do not have this problem with non-models. Please help. Oh, you know that's a really good question. So I, I would say, like at at the core, like models are just people, right? And that to me sounds like something that I went through early early days. With, to be honest, just like talking to women in general, like a you know something that's like been a you know something I've been struggling with since like the third grade. You know, it's just like, uh, uh, uh. it's like I think you're really cool. I want to hang out with you, uh, uh, uh. but you know I don't know what to say. Do you want to go uh, to Blockbuster later? Yeah, exactly. Blockbuster. Um, you know, <laughs> But at the end of the day, you know, models are just people, you know, everyone is just a person. And my general advice for talking with people who maybe you're just a little bit uh, intimidated by is just start off with asking them questions. You know, um, for instance, I'm meeting up tonight with uh, someone I met outside of the gym a couple nights ago, who's uh, actually like an incredibly well-renowned uh, ballet dancer. Um, and I, I hope to be photographing him soon. Uh, and, you know, I'm a little bit like, awestruck by this individual i mean first of all he's like six six and like just the most beautiful human being i've ever seen in my life and like a legitimately famous ballet dancer and i'm, I'm just mm -hmm. so excited about the possibility of photographing him um you know so i'm a little bit awestruck too but like my plan is just to like go ask questions you know like you, you can never go wrong with just asking questions and you know finding out what a person is interested in and as soon as you find a common uh, thread between you two, then I feel like the, the walls come down, you know, like ask a few questions, kind of poke around. Once you find a common hobby, like boom, immediately. Like, like when, when the two of you uh, and I started talking tonight, we started talking about like megapixels and Wi-Fi and, you know, cameras and stuff like that. And it's like, we're all into photography. Like we love photography and we love the gear and we love, you know, all this tech talk. Um, so it was very easy for us to like get this conversation going. And so for anyone who's they're like looking conversation one who you know they might find a little bit intimidating see if you can just ask questions find what a person's into find a commonality and once you got that then you can talk about that commonality um another thing to do is you know start by engaging in an activity uh you know uh, just having a conversation can be a little bit intimidating but if you have a conversation at the same time when you're like bowling or playing a card game together or or doing mm -hmm. some like tour sort of activity um then it, it tends to not put as much pressure on the conversation because the activity itself will definitely um you know kind of take care of a lot of those awkward silences or uh you know times when you're unsure of what to say you you can replace uh speech with action through an activity wow that was that was good yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean i'm you know like kind of an introverted person but i really love people and i like i you know, I'm not a shy person, but I do enjoy my alone time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I also have the unique opportunity of getting to talk and meet people, you know, from all different walks of life, uh, especially because I have a, a YouTube channel. So, you know, I'm uh, I'm constantly um, in a little bit of a public uh, limelight. So I've learned you know, these little tics, tips and tricks along the way. And I'm super happy to share them with uh, anyone else who struggles with the same things that I have. Steve, do you have any other hot takes for Elizabeth or anything? No, you, I, I think, I, mean, uh, I think Aaron knocked that one out of the park. So, I mean, the only other thing I could think that maybe she should possibly try in the interim while she's building up her confidence to get to that model talking level is maybe she could bring like a deck of word cards with her. And then she, you know, pulls out random cards from the deck and that just gives her a word that she can just say. So she has something to say in front of uh, the model. So at least then she's not completely wordless mm. or she can even show them the card if she doesn't quite feel she's up to the level of saying it yet. Or, I mean, another idea, she could just bring like a big jar of honey and like every time she opens her mouth and no words come out, she just throws some honey in there and she's like, mm. Mm. and then everybody kind of just gets it and they're like, oh, she can't talk right now. She's enjoying her good, good honey. So 
You know how that goes. That's true. Yeah. She would have to also get like a nickname going where people call her Honey. Honey Bear. Yeah. Honey, honey Bear. Honey yeah. Bear Elizabeth. Yeah. And she could have a card that says Honey Bear on it and she could, you know, throw photo. the Honey Bear into her mouth and then say a like Honey rebrand. Bear. And then like people would just get it and they'd run with it eventually. Yeah. But uh, Riles from a random Facebook group asked an interesting question, actually. I'm throwing cold milk on a model to try to get a long exposure shot of the milk flying through the air and all around the model. We tried the shot 10 times the other day, throwing about two gallons at a time. <laughs> the problem is the model kept moving. So there's a considerable amount of blur on his face. I'm going to have to reshoot. Should I get a different model or should I try heating the milk? How can I make this work? I would say all the above, you know, um, you know, like, first of all, like I, I've done a lot of, uh, you know, uh, interesting things with my uh, people I photograph. But at the end of the day, these are just people. Right. And like I would never suggest or subject anyone to do something or be in a situation that I wouldn't be enjoying in. So yeah, heat the milk. Of course, heat the, like at room temperature milk. Like who wants cold milk thrown on them? Like, you know, that's just like, don't do that to a person uh, starting off, you know, like, and, and that, I mean, I, sorry, this came out a little scoldy, but like, yes, <laughs> definitely try to make everything as comfortable as possible. Um, second Aaron, I got a don't... problem though with heating the milk. Okay. You start heating that milk. And all of a sudden you got cheese. Now you're just throwing cheese at them, you know? <laughs> we got a different concept here. Um, or just let them, know, you know, sit out, uh, on, you know, in, in a glass for a couple hours or whatever it is. But, you know, that just goes along the line with like, you know, if you can make it. Uh, uh, for instance, I was um, I was in Hawaii a couple of years ago with Eric Almas, who's a fantastic conceptual photographer. And I had the unique opportunity to, uh, to assist for him and, uh, and, and do, um, uh, composites for him on location. Uh, we were just in a, a stunning location. And for part of the shoots, uh, we had some people in, in water, uh, wearing bathing suits. Uh, they was in a constructed pool wearing a, wearing a bathing suit and we were in Hawaii, uh, but the water was still relatively cold. So before we had the people get in the water, we boiled, you know, tens of pots of water and put that boiling water into the large pool to get it up to room temperature to make the subjects a little bit more that comfortable. That works better. So, I thought you were going to say you just told them to get in and, you know, everybody <laughs> could pee a little bit and warm it up. <laughs> Mostly just the area they were in, not really the rest of it, but, you know, it works. <laughs> I could, that may work, too. Uh, some, someone's got a very full bladder. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, yeah, it, you know, like, please try to try to the treat the people you're photographing with, uh, you know, just like pretend that that was, that was you on the other side of the camera and, and how could you make it for the best experience? Um, the second is, you know, maybe experiment with like, maybe a long exposure isn't, uh, like maybe you could capture the same thing with a short exposure. Um, also compositing is a possibility too. So photographing your subject first with a shorter exposure to get a, uh, in focus shot of their face and then doing the rest of it with a long exposure and then just combining the two in Photoshop uh, to, to get the best of both worlds. And uh, if you need any help with compositing, check out Flurn.com because we teach Boom. that sort of thing. Boom. Yeah, I think my mind immediately jumped to like high speed sync type flash, um, you know, so you can boost up your shutter speed, get a flash that you can or a strobe that you can shoot at a higher shutter speed so you don't even have to worry about long exposure. I mean, my mind was still stuck on the cheese thing. I was like, you just make the cheese big enough, you wrap them in the cheese, and, you know, that's basically, like, very still milk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, like, slime, like Nickelodeon slime all over his head. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> like nacho cheese. Nacho cheese. <laughs> that, that can be your, uh, your next portrait, Aaron. Nacho <laughs> cheese. Nacho um cheese portrait. On this ballet dancer, this mm. critically acclaimed ballet dancer. Do you mind if I just pour nacho cheese on Look, your head? I'm sorry. Can you're you just one of the most a... beautiful human beings I've ever seen. I want you to strike a plie pose. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to dump nacho cheese all over you. Okay? It's a thousand gallons of nacho cheese. He but might be first, into it. Who knows? <laughs> first, I'm going to cover your body in Doritos. Wait, what? I don't know. Where That's are you going with point. this? <laughs> I, I'm just getting hungry over here. All this cheese talk. Um, 
Tabitha from a random Facebook group asked the following. I'm trying to do a photo where a witch is riding on a broom, snatching Halloween baskets from little kids like Yogi Bear snatches a picnic basket. Where I don't think that's I how buy... Yogi says that. How, how does Yogi say I... You said picnic. Well, that's not how Yogi says it, man. It's pick a nick. Pick a nick, pick a nick baskets. Sorry, you're older than me. Um, <laughs> where can I buy flying broomsticks to make this happen? I'd love to get a Nimbus 2000, but I'd settle for a clean sweep for this photo. The question is, where do you buy a flying broomstick? <laughs> that is what Tabitha would like to know. Um, let me check on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there a black market Amazon for flying witchcraft broomsticks? Well, I don't, there's a there's a Nimbus 2000 uh, uh, for 1949 on Amazon. Amazon. Oh, man. That's going yeah, 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 to get you up in the air. That, Tabitha. That's going to lift you, Tabitha. 15 <laughs> reviews. Um, you were, yeah, you're good to go. Um, you know, for pulling off the effect of making it look like you are flying, uh, my recommendation is to jump in the air and use a very fast shutter speed to capture yourself in the air and then cut yourself out of the background and place yourself into a new background of your choosing. Or contact your local engineering group. Go ahead and rig up a little bit of science so that you can actually make a flying broomstick tablet. Science. No, this is magic. Quit photography. <laughs> this is magic, sell, Dustin. Start selling flying broomsticks. There's a reason there's a Nimbus 2000 on Amazon, and that's because this is magic from Harry Potter, Dustin. Come on. I mean, just can you imagine the market that would open up on Uber if you could be picked up on an Uber broom? Yeah, yeah, and go chasing snitches with HP, your best friend. <laughs> Whole market share to be brought on with uh, Uber broomsticks. Built in from a random Facebook group asks, can I put shoes on a dog's ears for a photo? How about a cat or a mouse? What is the limit for shoe ears? <laughs> Where did you get this question? <sighs> Sounds like somebody needs to be reported to like, Animal protective services, if that's a thing. So, shoes on a dog's ears, that's animal protective services in your mind, Dustin. Yes. Okay, just want to know what the limit is for you. Aaron, you got a limit for this? I mean, I, w I personally wouldn't use real shoes. Maybe, like, uh, make them out of felt so they're not heavy. Mm. Uh, you know, and, uh, and maybe you could... Um, just kind of like prop them on there or you could just do it in Photoshop because, you know, that's less annoying for the dog. Uh, so, yeah, I would recommend just doing it in Photoshop. Just get a picture of a shoe and a picture of a dog and, uh, and voila. Yeah, I like perfect. the felt shoes idea, though. Um, and I like I like that a lot because then they're lightweight. The only thing I'm worried about there is they could fall off of the dog's ears. Could we pull like a Scrooge situation? Uh, where, you know, you just staple them on like, uh, Bill Murray said to do to the mice with the, who needed the reindeer antlers and Scrooge, or is that too far for everyone? So the, if the dog has a shoe on each ear, how Stapled many tongues, shoe on each ear. how many tongues does he have? Oh, oh, no. Not I hate a good you one. so much. <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, is that, is that all we got? Is that all the questions we've got, Steve? I mean, there's another question if you want to ask that one. <laughs> uh, I mean, I personally think when it comes to shoe ears, uh, it's really about the size of the animal. Like a cat is maybe too small. And, you know, maybe like a chihuahua is too small too. But like a black lab, that's like sh shoe dog ear size. You know what I'm saying? Shoe dog ear. Uh, you know, you get a, what was it? The vicunis? Is that what they're called uh, on the mountain in South America? <laughs> Vic, vicuñas vicuñas yeah. that, that yeah. sounds like a like a shoe ear sort of animal you know a mouse that's too small no yeah <laughs> yeah the mouse fits in the, in the entire shoe that's like a shoe bed situation then so, sounds like somebody who's taking their creativity a little too far or not far enough they're just putting <laughs> shoes onto the ears of animals 
sounds like something you see like later on a horror movie based around. I started with mice and now I do humans. <laughs> I staple shoes onto my neighbor's heads. <laughs> I started with mice shoe ears and now it's human centipede. <laughs> Okay. All right. I think Cameron, we're done with questions. Cameron from a random Facebook group asks, can't find Avadar? What, what is that? Avatar. Oh, Ava, Avadar. Blue people <laughs> intimate session photos online. Does that mean no market for it or it's market of unfulfilled desires? I want people to notice my work, so think this could be it. Help appreciated, especially about blue paint bodies just looking like sexy smurfs how do i make look as sexy avatar not as sexy smurf yeah i I don't really have much to add to this question i assume you've come across this a lot in your conceptual photos when you know you're doing blue paint on people how do you get them not to look like sexy smurfs uh you know i think with the avatars uh they have a wider bri- their nose uh, mm. the bridge of the nose is a little wider and they have pointed ears so i think as long as you do those two things uh, i think you're uh, I, I, I think you're good i love how well, seriously sir. you're approaching this to really help cameron out <laughs> well what would you do steve I don't know. I don't see why you can't do a sexy Smurf that's also a sexy avatar. That's all I'm going to say. You know? Oh, because <laughs> avatars blue. are really tall and Smurfs are really short. You so know, I don't think that's In this day and age, in this day and age, with the advances we have in sciences, I think we could get a crossover. <laughs> I think we could make it happen. A Smurf avatar crossover? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I mean, they can mix like a what a, a pit bull with a chihuahua, right? So we could definitely do a Smurf avatar crossover. There's nothing that stops us now. Okay. Definitely doesn't stop you. That's for sure. <laughs> you just got to know what genes to splice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can we can we talk more about Flurn? Yeah. I would love to talk more about Flurn. <laughs> Because this is making me feel awkward now. And usually it doesn't get to that point. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> so uh, back to your bread and butter. What was kind of like the runaway success course or like what was the knock it out of the park thing you did like educationally that really gave you a lot of notoriety? Oh, you know, to be honest, there's really not like, not like one thing it that wasn't I can, like a pinnacle point. Not really. Not, you know, like I, I got to say, I mean, some people, you know, get a, a viral video going and that can kind of launch their career. Um, you know, for me, uh, it's always just been a, a slow and steady gain. You know, I'm, I'm looking for the long road here, um, you know, posting valuable content and, and looking for, you know, slow growth over long periods of time, uh, you know, going for something that's sustainable rather than something that's, you know, more of like a, a phoenix. I, I don't want to just, you know, go fast and hard and, and, and totally burn out. So, um, you know, my success has is, is not been overnight at all. It's been, uh, you know, a very uh, slow and continuous climb up the mountain. So, you know, it's it's not an elevator ride. It's it's walking right up the uh, right up the peak. So I would say for anyone else, you know, looking to start their own endeavor and starting their own business, you know, you, you can't really count on overnight success or, you know, Internet fame or or anything like that. What you can count on is uh, your work ethic to take you through and uh, and bring you success as long as you're putting the time in and and doing your best day in and day out and uh, you know stay consistent for for years and years and uh, eventually you're going to be noticed so but surely there was like a a video you did or something that like somebody saw it and like wrote in and they're like oh my gosh like this changed how i edit or this changed how i do things well, I, I think different videos did that for different people, you know, uh, and, and everyone's trying to do something a little bit different. At the end of the day, we're an education company. So, you know, one person might need to learn retouching. Another person might need to learn uh, how to use the brush tool. You know, there there's no way to tell what uh, the average individual needs uh, at any given time. One thing that you can do is just provide a large breadth of work that's going to help 
just about anyone who's looking for uh, for help in your field. Mm-hmm. Nice. So what, what's been your favorite course or favorite thing to educate on? Uh, I mean, personally, I really love compositing. I, I think it's so much fun to do and the conceptual stuff. So, you know, anything conceptual is just, uh, just a joy for me. Uh, but also teaching the basics is really nice too, because I know that there are so many people who just need that information. You know, they, they looking at Photoshop and saying, gosh, what, what, how do I learn from this? Like, what, what can I do with this? Like super expansive program. And they just need to know where to start. So to be able to provide those people with education too is is really fulfilling in a in a totally different way. Mm-hmm. Do you find, do you feel that we're going to come to a place where I mean we're already kind of there at least in what Stephen and I do, but to a place where Lightroom kind of overtakes Photoshop from a a pretty I don't want to say a basic Photoshop level, but um where you really only need Photoshop for like heavy compositing. I mean, Lightroom is a fantastic program. I use Lightroom in conjunction with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for exposure adjustments and white balance adjustments and things like, you know, adding or removing contrast and sharpening, I think Lightroom can totally do the job. Uh, When you're looking for professional level results, I don't feel that there is a replacement for Photoshop as of yet. Uh, definitely not Lightroom. If there were to be any type of replacement for Photoshop, it'd be things like Affinity Photo, which are more Photoshop clones than anything else. Mm-hmm. But you can now, you can clone stamp in Lightroom and you can do, um, you know, gradial brushes and tonal brushes and it's, it's getting closer. It's yeah, it definitely I mean, it's not get- to a place where you can like cut and like move things around from photo to photo, but it's definitely getting to a place where I'm seeing and hearing from other photographers um, that they don't even like pay for the Photoshop in their Adobe Cloud anymore because they're so into just Lightroom. Is yeah, and I think an it depends option? on to not play- pay for Photoshop. The photographer option is Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, no, you can actually now buy. Um, just Lightroom through the app app store on your computer. Sorry to cut you off, Aaron. I just felt like Dustin was throwing out some weird bullshit right there. So, <laughs> and the, fil- the filter just you know didn't quite make it through Steve's filter. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know I think it depends a lot on the type of photography that that uh, you're interested in creating as well. You know, there's well, many types of photography that uh, would benefit mostly from Lightroom and possibly a little bit of light Photoshop, but you know, when you're looking to do uh, more conceptual work, for instance, I think uh, Photoshop is is still a pretty big uh, part of the puzzle. So as somebody who works in Photoshop a lot, are there anything, anything, because Adobe, big listeners of our show, constantly the developers <laughs> listen a lot. Um, is there anything you would change or could would want to see different in Photoshop? Oh, that's a good question. Uh we wanted to have one, at least one good question. <laughs> we thought that last Facebook one would get it, but man, that was a, that was a, that was a real swing and a miss. <laughs> uh, man, to tell you, I, I, I mean, I, I hope they just continue to develop their, their core tools. You know, their um, AI behind tools like the uh, spot healing brush tool is very good. And if they can continue to improve those type of tools, uh, I'll, I'll be very impressed because they're incredibly useful. Um, you keep the core tools around, please. Uh, you know, don't go changing too much of the core functionality because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, very still, you know, still very much a part of uh, what I feel makes Photoshop great. And, um, you know, any type of performance, speed improvements, uh, reliability improvements are always, uh, are always, you know, welcome. But the program has been around for so many years, you know, it's, it's, it's a very robust program. You know, it's, it's like a, you know, like the Porsche 911, they've been making that thing forever. You know, they make small changes to it every now and then, but like at the end of the day, it's like a really good car. So like, they just keep making that one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For sure. So for all of our listeners out there who are tech enthusiasts, unlike Stephen, um, we've had a few listeners that, you know, we're getting to the end of wedding season here. Um, you know, most people's heavy months are October. Um, and then you kind of drift off. So everyone's kind of thinking about that next gear purchase. 
Are you, uh, so you sounds like your team Sony, would you suggest everybody sell their Nikon and Canon gear and jump both feet into the Sony camp? <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm in a lucky position where I, I have a, uh, you know, a, a business around, uh, the photography industry. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if it was just my, my personal life and my personal expenses, I, I, I would not be able to afford, uh, to, to do something like that because you're going to, you're going to lose a lot of money in, in the process there. Um, that being said, there are, uh, adapters where that allow you to use, uh, uh, so, uh, sorry, Canon lenses on Sony cameras. Um, there's probably one for Nikon as well. I just don't have any experience there. And, uh, that may just be a decent, um, uh, a, a decent, you know, kind of like midway step there. Um, but you know, for me as a photographer, I'm looking at gear as like an extension of, of my art and, you know, gear, especially camera bodies are moving at such a fast pace where, um, it, it just makes sense for me to try to stay as, as current as possible because, mm. uh, it, it just, Again, you know, if I'm shooting with stuff that is, you know, just a few years outdated, I don't want to use that word outdated because it's not really outdated. But if I'm shooting with, you know, something that a, a camera body that came out four years ago, um, you know, something am I provide- aged and sophisticated. <laughs> exactly. Like a fine wine. Um, <laughs> That's what I like to think about my Nikon D4. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think that you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be missing out on some of the newer features with, with the newer bodies. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, what makes sense financially for, for people. So, um, you know, if you can afford, uh, you know, a relatively new Sony body, for instance, then I think they're fantastic. But, you know, if you're able to produce the work that you want to with your current body, then yeah, uh, just, you know, keep, keep going with that and until, you know, an upgrade makes sense for you. That was a really good answer. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, I was just going to say, I think you have to head out. So uh, where can people find you online if they want to know more about you? Yeah. So uh, obviously, Flearn, that's P-H-L-E-A-R-N, like photo learn. Uh, We have a YouTube channel. Uh, We have a website where you can watch free tutorials as well as pro tutorials. Uh, It's a subscription-based product as well. So uh, you pay, uh, you know, you pay once a year and you get access to every single thing on the site, which is so cool. Uh, we're also on social media, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Flurn. And then if you want to follow me, my personal, uh, the best place to do that is AK Nacer. That's actually, I'll just say it uh, the way you said it here. Uh, that's A K N as in night, A C E R. <laughs> You don't have to do that for me. I don't, but I don't thank think you I so like much. it as well that way. <laughs> Poor Nancy or, doesn't get any love then. <laughs> A K N is in Nancy A C E R. Uh, that's me on Instagram. You can uh, you can find all kinds of fun stuff that we talked about tonight. A C E R is in the old computer company Acer. Hey, yes, there yeah. you go. <laughs> nice to have one of those. Oh yeah. And you guys, you guys have been so awesome and kind uh, enough to provide our listeners with a promo code or a discount code. Uh, so if they go on there and check it out and they want to, they want to jump on to the, the pro level, I'm assuming this is what, what this is for. They can type in wedding hangover 20 and we'll I'll obviously, uh, put this in the show notes uh, and they get 20% off a, uh, discounted subscription. Heck so yeah. Uh, pretty fun. Pretty uh, good. It's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for providing that to all of our listeners, Aaron. That's so kind of you guys over at Flurn. And uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight to talk with us and just have a quick little chat. And uh, I think we're going to let you go now because I know you have a meeting in a little <laughs> bit. So. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been an absolute blast. Glad we got to <laughs> answer some questions about avatars and Smurfs. That was, <laughs> was uh, on my mind That as was well, so. the most and awkward you- question in the world, let's be honest. <laughs> And when you go meet that ballerina, I expect you to think as soon as you see him, see him, well, what if I painted you blue, dressed you up like an avatar and then dumped nacho cheese on you? I mean, he kind of looks like an avatar already, just minus the blue. Yeah. Uh, You know, and so take that photo and send it to us. (laughs) I know you're kind of a big deal, but do you mind if I cover you in blue paint? (laughs) Yeah. You humanize him. (laughs) <laughs> or alienize him. Really depends on how you look at it there. There we go. There we go. 
All right. Thanks so much, Aaron. Have a great night. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast with Dustin and Steve and this week with Aaron as well. If you want to help us out, jump on iTunes or Stitcher and leave us a five-star review. If you want to connect, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover or on Twitter at Wed Pick Hangover. Dustin, my man, is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben. And Steven is at Steven Van Elk. If you want to get involved with the awesome community of listeners, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. But if you really want to warm our hearts, head on over to Stephen Dustin Save the World dot com and you can sign up to support us for as little as one dollar a month. It's extremely helpful to us and to the making of this podcast. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right next Sunday after you shoot another, another wedding. wedding. Dun, dun, dun. Which I don't have a wedding next week, so what up? Oh, we've got two. Must be nice. Why don't you tell me you didn't have a wedding? We're looking for second shooters. Uh, we have friends visiting from out of town. Because I actually thought about it. Yeah, and I would get you out of that. <laughs> I know. I actually thought about it when I saw you post that you were looking for a second shooter. And I was like, how much do I like these friends? I was like, if they weren't driving from Cleveland and if we hadn't like. Is it Louis Novak? No. I was going to say, you're an asshole. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's actually our friends that we stayed with when we shot Louis Novak's wedding. Mm. So you should really be an asshole if you left. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's been like a crazy <laughs> mad week of trying to decorate and make our house presentable because this is the first uh, friends that we've had come stay with us for like a weekend. Yeah. I mean, you keep asking me by you keep asking me. I mean, you've never asked me and uh, I keep saying no, by which I mean, I'd say yes if you asked me. But, you know, whatever, yeah, whatever. Every time you say you're going to come, you don't come. And then your wife comes and <sighs> goes to the zoo. And uh, she's always like, oh, Steve's too busy. He's always busy doing Steve things. Well, <laughs> as everyone knows, people would much rather hang out with Jen anyway. So. Oh, most people don't know you, Steve. They don't know the real you. Most people do know the real me, and that's why they'd rather hang out with Jen. <laughs> that, that honey bear, honey bear of a Stevie. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Steven, S-T-E-V-E-N is in Nancy. <laughs> I like to think of it more as that N is in Knight Rider. <laughs> N is in Knight Rider. <laughs> Steve Knight Rider Van Elk. Do you think his middle name is Nancy? Yeah. Gotcha. 100%. <laughs> yeah. His name is Aaron Carey Nancy <laughs> Nacer. <laughs> it's his real name. Yeah. He changed it so it'd sound better on. <laughs> Jeez, you idiot. <laughs> oh, my. Is that, is that guy's name B is in boy Ob? Because, I mean, I, I don't understand why he keeps saying B is in boy Ob. It's so weird. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness, my gracious. Dustin, we're going to have to call it a night, though. Yep. We, we went it's for a long one. time with Aaron, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, we got we to gotta call it. Good night, Stevie V. Good night, Dustin. How do I make look as sexy avatar, not as sexy Smurf? It's on my mind as well. Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs. Woo-wee!